My name is Greg, and welcome to my Wargaming World. For all of those who have been following my weekly diary, this is now week nine, uh, which is on the website. And this week it's a painting tutorial of some Falschenjäger. Now before we do any explanation of what we're doing and why we're doing it and how we're doing it, I'd like to make uh, two, uh, two notes of, of thanks. These figures, these excellent figures, have, uh, have been given to me by Fixed Bayonets. They've sent them through and we're going to work on these uh, particular figures. Uh, they really are excellent. I'm going to go into really uh, good detail around them. But to start off with, it's a real note of thanks. Uh, very, very generous to send that through and uh, a great uh, donation to help grow this channel. Secondly, in order to try and get some good, accurate detail on the painting, uh, I needed to find some pictures. And I did so of pictures that were taken by Andrew Johnson of uh, the Frontline Association, which have their own Facebook uh, site, and just really to thank uh, Andrew and the group themselves for the two pictures that we've used. Hopefully it's really helpful and shows what we're doing and where we're trying to get to, so uh, that's great. So thanks both to, uh, to Andrew, uh, to the group, and as I say, to Fixed Bayonets. Okay, with that introduction uh, done, let's try and understand what we're trying to achieve here. Now, what I want to do is to show that we get a set of figures and the purpose is to try and get them on the tabletop. How do we do that quickly, efficiently? How do we produce good figures? But trying to make sure that it's an illustration of an average painter. So that's exactly what I am. So I don't do huge detail. You know, there's about a thousand and one different painting tutorials out there. But what this wants to say is, look, most of us have huge boxes of unpainted soldiers because ultimately it's too challenging. And I want to show that this is dead simple, try and get this across so we've got a good standard at the end and get the stuff onto the board as quickly as we can. So I think it might be useful to start off with and say, what's an average standard? What would I measure in terms of a barometer, if you like, a difference between what I think is average and completely acceptable, such as this figure here, and what I think is above average, which is great, but is beyond my own uh, capability to do. Now, this figure, uh, it's a BEF, Durham Light Infantry, little bits of markings on there, and I think it's just a nice figure. Now, this standard, for me, is absolutely perfectly adequate to get on the tabletop. So, what's a little bit better than that? Well, uh, what I would say is above standard is this. Now, I bought these, my French force, uh, a lot of my uh, 1940 French um, are from eBay. I bought them. I don't know who painted this. If you're watching, then please let me know, because these are absolutely super. And the difference for me is always in the face, because for me, I think you see a lot of figures where people have tried to put eyes in, and it looks like they've got huge eyes where they've painted over the uh, eyebrows or uh, eyelids, Whereas these really come to life with some really good character. So I think that's a lot of detail and I think it's a lot of hard work. I'll do my very best uh, for these Falsham Jaeger from Fixed Bayonets. But I think we need to uh, recognise that really this is a, a tutorial for the average painter like me. So what does the average painter have? Well, it tends to have, I would say, lots of brushes uh, that they've had for a long period of time. Some are good and some not so good, uh, and then just kept just in case for reasons uh, which are beyond my knowledge. Absolutely buckets of paint, so that's uh, something that we certainly do need. Uh, even the average painter needs to have lots of, uh, lots of paint. And then things like uh, here, the, the uh, ability to clip off the, the painting, I think this is really, uh, really useful. Um, also a very sharp knife and uh, either super glue or PVA. I know there seems to be an argument between uh, who likes what, so I will have no comment there. Uh, I use both, so that's fine. And then in here, the trusted bucket with uh, 
the toolkit of uh, odds and sods that uh, come in useful now and again. So in the video I'm going to go through uh, colour by colour, so where do I start, what's the uh, paint that I use and I think the very first thing uh, that might be different from other people is that I base the figures here because I like the feel that if they're on the base we've started off in such a way that we're you know making progress and that's nice and quick so this uh, set uh, have been set on these uh, resin bases which ultimately will be uh, roads so it'll be cobbled streets that they're standing on and uh, I've sucked them on with PVA put them on the night before and it's nice and solid uh, when they're completed I also do the same uh, I start with the bases with all of my other figures so for example you can see here this is the Warlord uh, plastic Germans and I just stick them on the base first and uh, it makes me feel like you know I'm part way through already when I'm painting my figures now the next thing is the undercoat. I'm assuming everybody really, uh, if we're going to have any decent standard, you've got to put a, an undercoat uh, on it, a primer, because we've got to have the rest of the uh, paint to uh, you know to stick comfortably on the on the figure. I know people use uh, an airbrush here to save some time, but I like to use uh, uh, the brush and feel like I've got a control on the amount of paint I've got that are going onto the figure, so we can make sure all the little grooves and details don't have too much paint on them. Just want to uh, also mention the sheer crispness of these figures. Really excellent to work with, very smooth, very clear, really, really excellent. I would really recommend them. They were great figures to, uh, to have and great sizes in comparison to the other figures. We've got the grey on, so I'm just going to touch that up a little bit. Make sure we've got uh, completely covered in uh, little nooks and crannies. But then the next thing to do is to look at the uh, colours of the uh, of the uniform. The next stage of the process is the uh, uniform. So we're looking at green. So I, I looked at these three, and I think the olive green is just a little bit too dark. So in terms of the main uniform, we're going to use the one on the far uh, right here, the green grey. And the darker ones for the legs is this uh, this Panzer Aces one, this slightly darker mud green. Now this is a painting tutorial, so uh, apologies if this is slightly granular, but I know that people use a, a like a wet palette, but I just use the paint straight on here and then try and put it uh, thinly uh, onto the onto the figures. So that's uh, the approach I take. That's the uh, first coat on. On, uh, on the figures, it's a painting tutorial, so what would it be better off doing two thin coats, uh, you know, missing stuff with the first one, etc., and just going over it just to do it rather than putting too much paint on? Because what you're going to miss then is the, the slight little nuances and details, and once you get to there, uh, it becomes really just a, a bit of a, a mass. So, yeah, two thin coats rather than one big, huge one. So we've started there with the green grey, so uh, we'll now follow it up for the trousers with this one, which is the dark mud 316. Again, a little bit uh, granular here, um, halfway through with the uh, second paint here, but um, I thought I'd also add, at the moment it's uh, a little bit quiet. What do I normally do whilst I'm painting? So some of the things uh, I might do is I, uh, I watch Tabletop CP, which is a, a fantastic uh, site and a fantastic Facebook group. I do lots of videos, lots of stuff on YouTube as well, so that's uh, great. I also listen to Two Fat Lardies, uh, their oddcasts and all of that going through uh, as well. Um, but also, uh, once I've been doing this maybe for an hour or something like that, maybe even less, you just have a bit of a break, stand back, go and make a brew, something like that. Just make sure you're standing up so you're not uh, crouched in a uh, in an odd position, in a, or a fixed position, I should say, for uh, a long period of time. Just good for the uh, good for the body and possibly for the soul. I painted the trousers and the helmet, added black for the boots as well. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is the base itself, darken that up, and so we can have uh, begin to pick out this uh, cobbled street effect. Very simple stuff so far. Just got a uh, very dark grey on these bases here. Now, the reason why I do this is to try and make sure that uh, we get some good quality, but also you'll notice the bases uh, of the figures themselves uh, really stand out there. So we need to have uh, some coverage to see that actually what we think we're looking at is just a base with the, the feet of the figures. So it's something else to, uh, to work on uh, to make sure that the overall picture and the overall image is a, a good one. So what I'll be using ultimately is this uh, battlefield uh, cover. Uh, so it's important to get that nice and uh, dark on uh, the area itself, this, this cobbled street, and then lighten it up and get, then get uh, this on top of it. Here you can see how the, just with a bit of dark wash, there you can see a good indicator of this cobbled street effect. On the right hand side obviously is one we haven't uh, added the wash to. So, very early on indeed, but I just thought, uh, I want to make a little bit of progress, so I thought I might as well do it with the bases. So they're going to be in, uh, well it's really street fighting, uh, they're going to have uh, captured uh, an area, a building or street or something like that in the game we're going to play in a week's time so that's why this is uh, based this way so uh, yeah that's the progress so far and on with the uh, more detailed painting just as a reminder we then use the dark grey the light grey as the highlight some PVA on the base itself and then put it in this sort of battlefield uh, gravel kind of uh, material. Now for the more detailed uh, painting we start off with uh, a flesh colour just on the face and hands. Follow that with uh, a metallic, a dark metallic and uh, we start by putting that on the submachine guns. Then followed by uh, a flat earth, one, four, three, and I've used that for the uh, for the rifles. Then uh, is a slightly different brown. It's a, a matte, uh, which is the uh, the Humbrol uh, matte acrylic, and I've used all of that for the webbing of the uh, uh, of the Germans. And then finally, it's a. Uh, a military shade wash which I use right across the figure to start off as a basic piece and that's uh, the half time whistle to see where we've got to. Now I want to try and add a little bit more detail so we start with the blue grey here and it goes on the uh, bandolier which is around at the shoulders of this particular figure then to get uh, a green brown and to add that uh, colour uh, into the magazine holder at uh, the front, it's on, uh, on a couple of the figures. Then this sort of dark mud, it's a, a green dark mud, it is very dark, uh, and it's on the helmet straps there. We uh, then used, uh, it's sort of like a lighter green, and it's on the packs, these are on about three or four of the different figures, just give a little bit of uh, variety on the back. Going back to the uh, metallic uh, dark grey again, this time for the, uh, it's like a gas canister for the, for the gas mask. Uh, the blue, I've used this on all of the figures, it's a dark blue and it's for a neckerchief uh, just there underneath the, uh, the neck. Added some uh, sort of silver metallic onto the uh, uh, gas mask holder again, just heighten that up. Then use the London Grey, just really for a bit of variety, it's on the uh, front of the, the packages. They do vary on lots of pictures that I've got, so I thought well this one at the front for that one is, uh, is dark. Then uh, a flesh wash, that gives some depth into the uh, faces and hands. And then I follow that with a military shade, and the military shade I then cover in all other areas, give it a bit of depth. And we can see now as it goes closer in on this particular figure, 
how that gives uh, a lot of a lot of the depth to it. I really like that uh, that look. We've then got the uh, the uh, badges on the side of the helmet, and then with the uh, silver, I tried to do the same on the other side uh, with the uh, uh, end side, but it really uh, didn't come out quite so great. And then with this light colour, the main colour again, I then used this for the highlights. So it gave it a, a nice, a nice total finish. And then the final piece is the matte varnish. And here's the finished product. So uh, eight figures, uh, which uh, we received, uh, which was fantastic from uh, Fixed Bayonets, great figures. And uh, we also used uh, the original images from uh, Frontline Association. And here's some final uh, final shots uh, here with the uh, uh, with the diorama uh, before we put this back on to the tabletop. I hope uh, the video has been helpful in terms of how we uh, how we paint things uh, as a what well, I describe myself as an average painter. Hopefully, uh, these are uh, you know there's some good figures there, and uh, yeah, it's useful in terms of what I've put together as maybe a few points to uh, make this. Uh, uh, an easy process to get them onto the tabletop. So the Fulcher Mjerger will be part of uh, next week's video when we have uh, a game of uh, Chain of Command and uh, if you've got any thoughts or uh, any ideas in terms of how they might be best used then uh, please feel free and uh, drop a note on the comments for uh, YouTube and for anybody who hasn't uh, subscribed beforehand then please just uh, have a look in the bottom right hand corner of your screen and click to subscribe and help to build the channel. Thanks very much. And finally, a final thank you and a, a little shout out for people who've joined uh, the channel uh, via YouTube. First of all, On Point HQ, who have their own YouTube channel. I recommend you find that. And also, we have the Little Corporal, who have their own website. So thanks very much uh, to both of them and all subscribers and we'll speak next time.